Thank you for joining me on the journey. This is Completed Christianity. So welcome back. Another episode of Being Complete. And today, today is fourth day, paganized words. Fourth day to Shabbat. So let's uh, dive right in. And so paganized words, these are words that in the English language, they might not be so good to use. So... Our first word that we tell, we've taken a look at is the English word G-O-D, God. So, this word, it doesn't appear in any Greek text, obviously, because it's English. And, and so this is actually not a part of your scriptures. It's just an English word. No matter how common it has been used. And so, in the previous video, we gave evidences that there's issues with this word. And, and although in this video, you're mostly, it, the argument's going to be very weak, so you go back to the last video, then watch this video. So, we'll take a look at one quote here in a minute. And um, this right here of our first of our two foundational scriptures for this series. So, Exodus 23, 13, And in all that I have said, to take heed, and make no mention of the names of other mighty ones, and let it not be heard from your mouth. So, so in any kind of reverent sense, we're not to mention the names of other mighty ones, of other deities, of of any kind and give no honor to them. Next verse, 1 Thessalonians 5.22, abstain from all appearance of evil. So if we abstain from all appearance of, of evil, then we'll not make mention or appear to make mention of these other names and many other things. In all Teutonic tongues, the supreme being was with one consent been called by the general name God. Some remarkable uses of the word God in our older speech and that of the common people may have a connection with heathen nations or heathen notions. So Jacob Grimm here, he kind of gives us this little namby-pamby um, explanation of this and say it may have a connection. Well, the what we read before didn't didn't say as maybe is a definite thing that there is a connection. But Jacob Grimm, he just gives us another picture over here in his Teutonic mythology. He gives another little look at what we talked about in the previous video. But moving along here, here are the etymology, etymology online of the word God it says also God Old English God, supreme being, deity, Christian God, image of a God, God-like person from Proto-Germanic, Gutten, Old Saxon, French, English, Dutch God, Old High German, Got, and German, Got, with two T's. And Old Norse, Good, Gothic, Gub, which, an uncertain, which is an uncertain origin. So here they like, bring it in again. What we talked about before is saying it's of uncertain origin. Well, we talked about the certain origin in the last video. And it, and it goes back and has its roots in the Hebrew. And so this is just filtered down throughout the, the centuries and jumped cultures and things like that. And, and that's why when we're looking at it in a different culture, we don't know where it came from because it's jumped from one culture to another. And so this word this word got G O T T that going back to the German this is this is where we get our English word from. So Simrock discovered songs he was a German musician discovered songs wherein got G O T T was used as a surname for the deity Odin and so this got is god in English in our anglicization. It's the same same word, same name, 
and this is where we get it from in our English. So even if it's of uncertain origin in the German or other languages, even if it was an uncertain origin, we have that in English our origin is the German, the G-O-T-T, -T, the got. And so we know that that, that name is is used as a name was used as a name for Odin and so right there we don't have to go any further so alternatives well what what can we use what should we use so obviously the Hebrew Elohim use that obviously and it means the mighty one that's what I typically use and typically read that read Elohim as is the mighty one the mighty one of Israel and also Yah so the short form of Yahweh or however you want to say it. So Yahweh, Yah. So you use Yah. And obviously, if particularly a lot of songs that use the, the G-O-D, you replace that pretty easy with Yah in most cases. So Yah is definitely a good replacement for this title and name of, of God. So Yah is definitely the better form. So why wouldn't we want to use the best forms that we can in honor and adoration to the mighty one of Israel? So question. Same question. Same question as before. Is this English word really good enough for your adoration and worship to the creator, the mighty one of Israel? Psalm 89, 34. My covenant, I will not break nor alter the word that has gone out of my lips. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up. Comment down below. Comments of opposition are welcome. Just don't say anything dumb like we're not under the law or in a grace because you've been taught to use that verse outside of the bounds of its intended context. So subscribe now. Smash that subscribe button and ring that bell so that you get notifications of all future videos.